Greetings, Game Master Player here for yet another wonderful Dungeon Master vlog. Now, I'm driving a bit, of course, like normal, so, you know, ignore all the stuff in the background, all the extra movement and cars and stuff in the background. That would be great, right? Right. <laughs> um, but let's go back to um, some background story information now that we got to work on. Um, I've got a lot of issues with uh, different... Uh, potential player character problems that would work would or would not work with our um, background. So I'm going to try to squeeze things in to work best. I've got two Outlanders that I'm trying to f have them find a spot in the story beyond just the fact that they're the outside guys. So i got to work on that. Um, and a few other players with kind of the same thing. That's going to be our Gnome Bard and our uh, Goliath uh, Cleric. Now... The reason with the Goliath is because I did not establish a Goliath community in any way, shape, or form, and that is a problem. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do or get them involved or get him involved more directly with a ba based on a community and create backstory for that. I've already got backstory for most of everybody else, uh, for the most part. I don't have a uh, decent backstory, at least. I don't have good stuff for my cleric. I don't have anything for my, my bard. And my druid and my warlock, it's going to be easier to work on it since they're outlanders. And the warlock did pick a history book, a local history book. So that should also be helping um, down the road as far as being able to discern what's real, what's fake, you know, things like that. So, but needless to say, you know, let's go back on topic here. So I've got this uh, organization, you know, this adventurer's guild. And, <coughs> excuse me, they were founded to basically fight the dragon. So, um, and I'm going to use that as the public reason, um, is to basically fight the dragon. I'm going to work on a few other background pieces, but I think the other one is for them to explore. Um, I mean, it's part of it, kind of to explore, find items, ruins, you know, whatever, things like that. Um, that's part of their mandate, but I'm also going to work with the fact that they also need to, um, try to reconnect with the old kingdom. So... Because that's ultimately their goal, is to kill the dragon get back to the Old Kingdom. Um, and then bring back information about that Old Kingdom. You know, what's going on, what, what's happened, what's transpired. You know, maybe we want to declare independence, or maybe we need to, uh, uh, you know, send troops to help them out. You know, whatever. Just lots of different possibilities. And I haven't opened up that yet entirely. But I am working on the fact that there's going to be more information that has not been... Excuse me, I think I burped there a little bit. More information that has not been released that might be negative or positive. I'm not sure yet which. Um, negative as in... Well, positive like is in... You know, there's might be... Uh, the reason why everything's cut off is because... Or people like it cut off is because the cu current ruling people um, are criminals. Or have, have some other issue to where they shouldn't be allowed, um, you know, to go back or, you know, they'd be arrested or executed or, you know, what have you, which would be, <coughs> excuse me again, which would be a really interesting take on it, don't get me wrong, um, and then there's also the option or possibility of, um, you know, maybe the kingdom itself is bad, you know, maybe I can go take that, maybe I'll take that angle, maybe the whole dragon thing is actually a blessing in disguise, I, I don't know, you know, it's... But I need to start working on some more history pieces there and what is worth hiding from everybody else. And that's going to be the biggest issue is that obviously things are going to be hiding. And that's an important part of the story as well. Secrets. You know, secrets within secrets within secrets. That may make things a little more interesting, may light a little bit of a fire under some people about um, playing their characters and doing some research and, you know, working on some more. Um... And I'm also working on, I, f I figured out what the the main enemy that our wizard friend, that he was a soldier, became a wizard because he, what he was fighting required magic to defeat. So my um, option is the fact that it's what he's looking for, or what he was fighting, what's, what's basically slaughtered everybody, and that's the thing, term, term I am going to use slaughtered, is I'm going to have it an iron golem. So... Iron golems are notoriously um, strong, resilient, um, can only be hurt by adamantine weapons, 
um, or, or magic, you know, adamantine or magic, magic weapons. They have magic resistance, so even magic doesn't do a whole lot of damage to them. So I can't, you know, so that, that makes it, but magical items, of course, still do, you know, like a magical sword stuff does, does full damage and stuff like that. So we would definitely want to use that, that stuff. So here I am looking at my options for, you know, well, now why is there an iron golem there? And I'm creating more of a backstory of why the iron golem is there. So, because that's something that the players may eventually actually look into, kind of unfortunately, because at the time I didn't plan on it, <laughs> but it opens up opportunities. So we've got that. There's the giant to the north, which I'm going to um, work on that a little bit more as well. I want to find out you know, why is there a giant? Why is he up there? Why, where are the rest of the giants? Um, I have determined that he is a storm giant, which is a big change as well. So, uh, yay, storm giant. You know, resilient to magic, uber strong. You know, why is he there? And I'll create a backstory with him as well. He is friends with the uh, head wizard. I right, kind of head wizard. It's basically the, the wizard's master. I don't have a name for him yet. Um, I do know that I decided to make him a scholarly wizard more than an, an actively wizard. So he leveled up through research and menial tasks as opposed to actually leveling, leveling up through um, adventuring. So, and that's why he's in charge and he needs to find an adventurer to do the tasks that he would technically be doing. That's where the player comes in, you know, in, into this. So, you know, I've got lots of different reasons, but that's, that's what I'm working on right now. So, I've got ties into at least two player characters deeply tied and rooted into the story already. Um, out of my six, that's not too bad. It's not really good though either because I get to work on the other ones. Now I'm going to work on the fact that Again, my Outlanders, I have to have a reason for them to want to come this way, so I'm going to start working on the fact that there are possibly some ruins or something, and it might tie in with the Iron Golem, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'll do that. And I'm also starting to look at my options for magical items. My players are now second level, I need to start introducing things like potions, scrolls, maybe a wand or two, or some... In now see, I don't also like have... Um, I don't really don't like to have actual... Uh, solid, you know, I use only the book magic items kind of thing. I don't do that. That's not my game. That's not what I do. I make up a lot of unique stuff and I run with all the unique stuff. So um, I'm looking at possibly creating, uh, like, I, I'm asking to ask players what kind of unique items they may want or might fit with their character, whether they want armor, magical armor, weapons, whatever, you know, what's going to be the focus. And again, take it from there. So I'm hoping, again, I get some good um, uh, support from my, my players to give me great ideas so I can actually get this stuff uh, built for them because it's going to be custom. So like right now, um, and hopefully he's not going to watch this, my uh, warlock, I'm looking at, uh, he was he was looking more of a warlock from like um, uh, World of Warcraft, you know, it's summoning, more things like that. And unfortunately, it's not. And I think he's starting, I don't know if he's quite understanding that piece yet. So my goal is to possibly create an item so he can summon like uh, a wolf. I'm gonna have him, you know, so he can summon wolves. So here we go, we're gonna have him summon, summon a wolf. Um, he's gotta tune to it, and I'm not gonna make it a wand. I'm gonna make it like a fetish. So it's gonna be like this, um, totem looking with the wolf pelt piece on it, carved out of uh, maybe some sort of bone. Um, I think I'll go with that, a weird, or not weird, but a strange idea like that. Maybe decorate with some wolf's teeth um, kind of a thing. You know, just throwing that out there right now. And it's going to be able to summon a wolf and it's going to last duration. It's just like the spell. Um, it'll protect the, the caster, fight for the caster, things like that. Um, I'll go with that one. That's like a, that sounds like a good idea. And then um, I gotta start introducing a few other items. Now I'm going to introduce both the uh, the rechargeable magic items and the um, limited charges mag magical items. So there might be some wands that or items that only have limited number of charges and they're done. You know, um, I'm gonna do both. I don't want to have I don't wanna, I don't want to limit myself, but that way I can 
again, story elements, I can make things uh, a little bit more interesting because now I have, you know, so-and-so has an item that is, you know, only has one charge or two charges or what have you. Um, and it's limited use, so people can, you know, when, when the item is identified or when it's it gone over, they can go, oh, well, this item was only, uh, you know, only a one-use item, and they used it up. So, which means somebody either had it available or they crafted just for that specific reason, which, again, adds more mystery, adds more uh, functionality to what I can do in my story. And hopefully, and again, I say hopefully, players will pick up on it and they'll put the pieces together and we'll have a good story uh, with that with that information. Again, you know, we're working on it, working on it. So my goal is to utilize everything to my advantage. Um, monsters, races, uh, items, you name it, I can use it to my advantage. Uh, also right now the players are pretty much convinced that their enemy is a necromancer. <clears throat> so because how else could he keep the hand alive long enough to be, you know, that he, he, he had to use a hand from the driver to access that that, um, that secret sarcophagus area. So that's from my last video. So they're pretty much convinced he's a necromancer, which is which is good. That works for me. Whether he's a necromancer or not, I, I don't know. I don't think I don't know if he's going to be or not. So I haven't decided yet. Um. So still, again, working on that. Working on some details. I need to get, uh, like, some of the items I'm going to work on is going to be, because the players need to find magical items that are going to help them defeat a dragon, which is kind of difficult if you think about it. <laughs> and they also need to work on items that's going to just help them out in general, being adventurers. And some things I want to work on would be, I want to get them to have, um, you know, more than just, like, healing potions. Maybe I can get them an item that can heal them consistently, just... You know, but I don't want to do the, oh, it's a wand, or it's a rod, or you know, something else. I, I want to do more things like, you know, it's an enchanted tabard, it's an enchanted um, uh, holy relic of some kind. It's, you know, something else that can be doing these things. So, and that's the kind of stuff I want to look into. So, sorry. And, you know, and I, I create things like that. Like, there was a, uh, an adventure set that I was making. I made these... Um, things called the uh, sandals of the, of the traveler and it, all it is is a pair of sandals that whoever wears will never pick up stones will never cause uncomfort so they won't get blisters on their feet that kind of stuff that's it that's the magic it doesn't do anything else but it's a really cool item you know if you think about it and the staff of the traveler is another one it's kind of goes as a set and every time you go to a new place it adds another uh, knot like would not on the staff. So the more places you've gone, the more the knottier your staff is. It has all these little wood knots on it, which would be really cool too, right? So then if you go someplace and you're not sure and you and you look at it, if it puts a new knot, you've never been there before. If it doesn't, well, you've been there before. <laughs> so you know, and, and again, working on little pieces like that, I, I'm gonna I gotta create some nice, unique magic items that the players can enjoy. So. Um, I am working on a couple of strange, like, uh, um, uh, I don't want to say it's like going to be jewelry, but it might be something jewelry related. So, because I wanted some things like a jade statue maybe, or a, a, a pearl statue of some kind, or, um, you know, again, trying to make things a little bit different, trying to work with things uh, the best I can, but some of the meat and potato stuff that I was telling you about. So I want to... Again, I don't want to have items that are just exclusively, you know, they recharge after, you know, nightfall or whatever. They charge at sunset. Um, I'm going to have some... There's a sword I'm working on. I, I believe it's a sword. It might be an axe. I haven't decided yet which way I want to go with it. Uh, it'll be a sword or an axe, and it will recharge um, its ability after letting blood. So it has to hurt somebody to gain a charge back. You know, and each different person it hurts it'll gain a charge back. And then I'm gonna have another item that's gonna be each person it kills, it will gain a charge back. Um, because that will add uh, a little bit to it as well. So you've got um, stuff about people, you know, either doing it for, you know, they gotta kill something, uh, they have to, you know, hurt somebody, you know, it's gonna be some evil items. Now, it's gonna be evil by look. 
and you know, some function. Obviously, killing isn't a good thing. It's not something you want to really lead with. But, um, you know, so this bloodletting sword, whatever it might be, you know, gains charge spec for its ability to, let's say, it can, you know, it's like a flame tongue. You know, it functions similar to a flame tongue, uses a charge, but to recharge it, you have to, uh, yeah, I'll call it, you know, it'll have to hurt somebody. You have to actually um, do damage and cause bleeding. So, not like, so if you hit an automaton, or like a skeleton, something that doesn't have blood, nothing happens. It's gotta be something that can bleed. So, that's that's another interesting thing. You gotta, gotta throw that little caveat in there. So, you think that might be easy, but to other times it won't be so easy. So, you have to pick and choose when you can use the powers and the abilities. Otherwise, you're gonna have to cut yourself to get it to work. Hmm, that might not be a good idea. <laughs> so, but, you know, again, little things like that. It's, well, it's not actually, that's not very little, that's actually a big thing. But, um, so I can mix it up a little bit. You keep the players on their toes, not just have like command words or things like that, but actually make it interesting. So, um, like, uh, um, maybe a quill that will write uh, in a different language as long as it uses a particular kind of ink. Or, again, going to the more gruesome part, if it's if it's gonna be dark magic based, it'll be like a crow quill. Um, it'll be oh, it's black, inky black um, quill. And if you dip it into the blood of whatever race is the language you can write, you can write it. How about that? That's kind of a neat one. Yeah. Kind of creepy. So, um, but, you know, again, to use its magic, you have to kill somebody and use its magic. So, you know, or to decipher. Maybe not to write in the language, but also to decipher. So, you can get, um, you should get some sort of text or script, you know, that's written in the wrong language. You'd have to uh, kill somebody, or you know, again, you can blood bloodlet. That's something that can be done to translate it. So, which would be difficult to do because most of the time, if you if you don't have anybody in the party that can that can or can't read it, they're probably not the race that can read it anyway. So it'd be kind of difficult. So that's the stuff I'm working on now. I'm working on. I gotta get some uh, some items so the players can be uh, sated for their you know greed. No, but I don't want to say it that way. One of the goals is to find things to, you know, to uh, unique items, unique or better items. It's part of the whole adventuring process. It's, you know, get good gear. I don't believe in giving them oodles of cash to buy their own stuff. I believe them giving unique things that they can utilize and uh, or give up, whatever. So and that's that's really the goal. I want them to find. You know, I want this to be a unique experience. I want them to say, you know, remember this game that had the blah, or this game that had the ah, uh, you know, the, you know that kind of stuff. That's what I want them to be able to say. That's what I want them to be able to do. So, but anyway, I think I rambled on long enough. I got some story of stuff in, and now we're working on some items and things, and I got to work on some spell books. And I do know there's going to be a few spells that are going to be translated via tablet, so it won't even be on a scroll or anything like that or a book. And, um, and a few other things too. So again, working on my options. And as I develop some more and as I create some more areas, I will let you all know about it. So enjoy. And if you use any of the stuff that I've brought up, please give me credit for it at least. Or um, and if this is going to be in, in something print, well, I definitely need credit for it because some of this, this whole DM series may end up in print anyway. I may end up trying to print this out and have people purchase it online. I don't know yet. We'll see how good the game turns out. Okay, so I'll see you all next video.